What's up people, uh, sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, I've been working on a little project which I can't say too much about at the moment but um, you'll definitely find out about in time and it's been a bunch of fun so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, so this is the advanced airbrushing tutorial um, and because it's the advanced version I'm kind of hoping that everyone watching this has uh, a base knowledge or or a background knowledge of Photoshop to to some degree. If you don't, you still may be able to follow along to this tutorial, but you might find yourself getting a little bit stuck. If you are just completely new to Photoshop, you're probably better off um, with the the easier version of this tutorial, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Um, so yeah, the I'm literally just gonna jump straight into it. So. The first thing you want to do is create a copy of your background by hitting Ctrl and J. I did that twice, which I didn't mean to do. <laughs> so yeah, you're just going to want to copy that once. Um, if you're on a Mac, it's Command and J instead of Control. That applies throughout the whole tutorial. If you ever hear me say Control on something, then that just means Command if you're on a Mac. Um, and this is going to be our blemishes layer. Um, so yeah, on this layer we're literally just going to go through and remove all the blemishes. Um, there's two main tools we can use to do this, um, and they are the spot healing brush tool and the patch tool. I actually prefer the patch tool over the spot healing brush tool, um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll just show you how the spot healing brush tool works quick. So you literally just size your, your brush up and click on the blemish. If you're wondering how I change the brush size with the keyboard then, it's the square brackets. Um, the left one make, makes it smaller and the right one makes it bigger. The downfall to the spot healing brush tool is when it blends, it tends to blur at the same time. It uses blur to blend in a sense. Um, and if you use it too much, it can become quite noticeable. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the major downfalls to the spot healing brush tool. Um, as far as the patch tool goes you actually get some input into how you replace the blemish um, and I'll show you that quick so you literally just draw around the blemish um, then click and drag and choose a, a destination for the replacement um, and the quality thing about this tool is the the, the merge um, the, how it blends is it just looks natural um, and it doesn't it doesn't clash with all the texture and that around it in a sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'm I'm kind of hoping you know what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, um, and literally using these two these two tools, I am just going to go around and remove all the blemishes quick. Oh wait, no, scrap that. I actually did one earlier, just because I couldn't be bothered to go through and do it all. So yeah, that was a touch. Um, so here's one I did earlier. <laughs> um. I'll show you the before and after quick of what I did. Um, so that's the after, obviously, and that is the before. Not a major change. And as you can see with this one, there's still a little collection of blemishes up here, but um, the mask we're going to be creating will will go ahead and remove them as well. So if you've got a load of little blemishes that, to be honest, you just can't be bothered to remove, leave it to the mask. The mask will do just as good a job. Um, so, yeah. There's a little mole thing down here which... I'm actually going to enhance a bit, um, only because it gives the, the face a bit more feature. Um, and I'm literally just going to do that by grabbing my burn tool, uh, dropping the exposure, exposure percentage to about 5%, like nothing major, and just highlighting it a bit. And then I am going to grab any selection tool. I'm going to use the elliptical tool for this quick. I'm going to select it hit control J and that's going to give it its own layer then I'm going to hit edit free transform and just make that a tad bigger um, place it back where it was hit the arrow and apply that and then this time round I'm probably going to use the spot helium brush tool to just go around and oh let me merge that down quick so I'm going to hold in control or command select the two layers right click and merge hit merge layers and then using the spot healing brush tool I'm just going to go around and blend in the outskirts of that selection um, and that is literally you can still kind of see the circle but nothing too bad and that's literally just going to enhance that blemish it had and I only did that because it adds a bit more feature and yeah I just kind of like it so 
yeah now we're gonna get on to our mask um, so we're gonna create a copy of our layer one um, or our original blemishes layer and I'm gonna name this um, mask or airbrush again you don't have to name these just as long as you know which layers which um, so yeah I'm gonna select that layer head to filter blur surface blur and then I'm going to select a, a, a decent blur which makes the skin look smoothish. Don't worry about everything else because we'll be removing that. But And don't be scared to go overboard with it because we can always tone it down later. So I'm probably going to go about 25, 20. Again, that's going overboard by a fair amount. But um, we will, yeah, we'll tone that down a bit later. Again, I'm... I'm running off a fairly high res image, so your um, percentages, you know, all the um, percentages and that that I just put in there, so 25 threshold and stuff like that, they're going to be different. So don't copy them over exactly, just play around with it and get it looking how you want. Um, so now with this layer selected, once that's finished blurring, um, we're going to head down to this little button here, which is the vector mask, or layer mask, sorry. Um, and we're going to click that and then you should get this little white box and we're going to make sure we're running black in the background over here if you've got two random colors here like blue and pink just click that little button there and and it should switch it out and then just make sure black is the background color um, and then we're going to make sure we still got this little white box selected hit control or command and erase and that is just going to completely remove all our blur the reason for this is because we're now going to select our black paintbrush uh, our black paintbrush we're now going to select our paintbrush and make sure that we're running white and that blacks in the background and put our opacity to about 50 percent and go around and paint the mask back on um, so literally like you was applying makeup just go around and paint it on and the good thing about doing it this way as well is you can kind of adjust how much of that mask you paint on and um, how much blur you actually apply and I would suggest leaving a little bit of texture um, don't worry about leaving too much because we will be going around and adding some desaturated noise to put any texture we lost we lost back in um, but yeah just play around with it under and around the eyes I'm probably gonna go fairly easy on because that's where most of the texture is um, and we don't want to lose it all and um, yeah so one thing I am going to do is leave the nose for now and I'll, I'll tell you why in a bit and go a little bit lighter on the cheeks as well because they are their focal points of the image and you don't want to take away too much of the texture from that because it can look a bit weird I'm literally just going to go around paint this mask on and then I'll be right back okay so as you can see I have gone round and um, applied that mask if you're if you're struggling to see where you've applied the mask you can just hold control on the keyboard and click on our little layer over here and um, it should bring up a little painting and then you can paint some in there if you've missed any spots that you didn't quite notice um, which I have um, and yeah and then when to get out of that mode just hit alt and click on that little layer again um, so I left the nose the reason for this is the nose is quite a, a big um, focal point of features. Um, it's where most of the texture is on the face. Most of it is on the nose. And if you remove all that texture, it kind of ends up blending in with the face and just looking over edited and a bit weird. So what I would suggest is just sizing your brush up to a decent size and then going over it in one clean sweep. Literally just clicking and clean sweep, that's it, I'm done. If there is still a bit too much texture on there, you can go over it again, but I normally just do the one sweep and then that is it. Um, so, yeah. Now we have done our airbrush, we are going to want to go through and add a bit more texture in. So, I am going to select the layer 1, hit Control J. Um, again, that's the layer 1, our original blemishes layer. And drag this above our airbrush layer. Then I'm going to click on the little layer mask on our airbrush layer. Hold Alt and click and drag it onto the layer above and that is just going to copy the mask over make sure you've got this little select this little picture here selected hit control shift and u and that is going to completely desaturate 
um, and we're going to add a little bit of noise. The reason we desaturate it to add noise is because you can get a bit of colour noise in if you don't desaturate it, and that can that tends to ruin the image. Um, and yeah, you don't want that. So we're literally just going to add noise. In fact, before we add noise, I'm going to get my zoom tool, and I'm going to hit actual pixels. Um, only because this is this is going to better show us um, how much noise we're actually dropping in. So I'm going to head to add noise, and you're going to want to. That's actually spot on. You're going to want to head to get that that much grain in your image. Again, your percentage is going to be different, but that's the sort of grain you want to get in there. It's kind of hard to tell, but just play around with it and get it looking somewhat like that. And then hit OK. Again, you're going to want to make sure. Sorry if I just show you quick um, noise. You're going to want to make sure you have monochromatic checked and uniform checked under distribution. Um, and once we've done that, we are going to head to our blend mode and switch it to soft light. And that is going to drop a lot more detail back in. The only thing, it, one thing it will do as well is, again, add a lot of grain in there, which we don't necessarily want. There's two ways you can go about toning that grain down. Um, the first way is to just drop the opacity on that layer. Um, but the problem I find with that is the grain up on the lighter spots is nowhere near as bad as the grain in on the shadow spots. So what I tend to do is go through and grab my brush tool again. This time I'm going to switch it so we have white on top. I'm going to drop my opacity to about 25%, select our layer, um, our little layer mask under our layer, and go around and paint away the noise. Literally just paint it away in a sense. Um, I think, oh sorry, no you don't want to run white, you want to run black on top. Um, <laughs> and then paint away the noise. That could have been a major foul. Um, well it kind of was, but I think I saved it. I saved it, right? Yeah, I saved it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count that as a save. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to want to go through and paint away all the, the obvious grain. Um, again, if it's taking a while to paint it away you can just up the opacity on your brush a bit but I normally find that 25% is, is spot on. Um, you don't want to do this too much because you're going to be removing some of the shadow as well when you're doing this and um, shadow kind of adds in quite a bit of feature so you obviously don't want to remove that all. I'm probably going to leave it there for now in the way of toning that down. One more thing I will do is blur the grain so I'm going to select the image again head to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I normally only ever blur it by about 0.5 pixels between 0.5 and 1.5 is probably going to be the best and uh, again that's just going to take away from that that graininess and um, drop a bit of texture back in <coughs> so one more thing I like to do on the airbrush layer is come back to this oh sorry <coughs> telephone going off in the middle of the tutorial just my luck. <laughs> um, head back to our airbrush layer, select the image, hit Control U to bring up our saturation and just add a bit more colour in. Um, I normally only ever saw plus 10 on the, sat uh, the saturation and plus 5 on the lightness um, but as you can see that just kind of adds a bit more colour back in. That's the before and that's the after. It just makes it look a bit more natural. So I am now going to duplicate this layer again one more time, our original layer one, and I am going to merge these two down into it. So I'm just going to select them all, holding control, then right click and merge layers. The reason I've done this is so that I can tone it down a tad because you might find that it's still a bit too much airbrushing. If it is, you can drop the opacity down and again that's just going to take away from that airbrush. Um, and I'm probably going to drop it to about 75%. Yeah, so that's the before without the opacity change, and that's after. As you can see, it just brings a bit more texture back in and makes it look a tad more natural. Um, and I'm going to fit that to screen. And as far as the airbrush goes, I think that is about it. Yeah, let me merge that down. So that is it. I'm going to just rename this final quick. Um, if you're wondering how I just merged that down then, here I'll back up quick. When I have the two layers with the, the top one selected, just hit Control or Command E and that should merge it down into the layer underneath. 
Um, so I'm just going to rename that final again. <laughs> and yeah, so this is our after, and <coughs> that's our before. So as you can see, it, you know, it's not a massive change to be completely honest, but it's definitely enough to improve the image um, and just make it look a bit better. So yeah, thanks for watching, and this has been Advanced Airbrushing. It would be really cool if you liked this video, if you could drop it a like. In the same respects, if you thought it was crap, just drop it a dislike. We, we um, enjoy them both. <laughs> so yeah, um, peace out.